This season of Psycho Pass is so goddamn good. I go as far as say this was my favorite episode. We have one episode left of season three. We took down crazy religious organizations. Kay's wife gotta get treated because she killed someone and it looks like her hue's a little clouded. There's the, oh shit, is she gonna be able to recover? It looks like Kay and Arta are having a falling out. You got our old girl being like, hey, you know, if there's anyone who's gonna be able to, you know, fix Sybil's corrupt system, it's gonna be... The guy who can have his hue down to literally zero, criminal coefficient of zero, which shouldn't be accepted by Sybil, but somehow was, and just everything and how there was a lot happening, but it really felt like it flowed really well. And it once again highlights why we need double length episodes for Psycho Pass 3. And if they make a season four, I really hope they do a similar format of double length episodes because this season has been an absolute blast. It just felt like so much was at stake here and I really thought that this little arc wasn't going to be concluded until next week because we had one more episode left I figured that even if like Kay escapes or something I wouldn't expect like Heaven's Leap to completely crumble by the end of episode 7 but they did but it also feels like because B. Ross only has, I guess, two people left, maybe there is enough time to wrap up this story and then maybe set up even more with like a season four or a movie or something like that. But this episode blew me away. We knew like Kay and his wife escaped from a very hell forsaken place. And it totally makes sense that his wife would also be combat oriented, but I wasn't expecting it, but I thought it was both badass and so disappointing to see what she did to this man because I knew immediately after, I was like, man, that's super awesome. And I was like, oh shit, her hue is gonna get clouded. Like, I do expect she probably will be saved, and if not, like if her hue doesn't fix itself, I imagine Kay will break her out and escape with her. Because in a lot of ways, Psycho Pass generally only has like two inspectors in any given season, and the fact that Kay didn't die, it almost feels like maybe they're setting it up so Akane will be released, and Akane will work with Arta in the future, and potentially will Kay have to run for his life with his wife because her hue's too clouded for her own good or something like that. I could definitely see them doing something, but at the same time, maybe they'll break the trends and maybe Akane will either just be a third enforcer, a third inspector, or maybe she'll just do her own thing in the future of Psychopaths' story. I don't know, but this is insane. I really thought they explained this crazy terrorist organization exceptionally well, especially with how there is so much we didn't really understand. Like, why was supposedly someone on the good guy's side smuggling in weapons? Well, turns out they were actually just to get them out of war-torn countries, and basically they weren't even going to last all that long. You had just Kurzu wanting to take all the blame and basically get revenge for his son, but... At the same time, he was just being manipulated while thinking he wasn't, and you just start feeling like all the pieces are snapping into place, and a lot of the questions that I was having over the past few weeks, it just kind of gave me a, aha, of course, that's why this was happening, it totally makes sense, and I thought it was really refreshing to see it all come into place, but then every time you started feeling like you understood, and you were like, okay, you're starting to feel comfortable, you feel like there's a path, there's an easy way forward, a sniper or a badass grandma would come in with a gun and just completely shake everything up. And I thought, like, of course, this is psychopaths. Of course, they're going to do something like that. But, you know, it was kind of insane to watch from Kay's side while you didn't really know what the hell is going on because the first time he escaped and you're like, okay, clearly he didn't do that in his sleep. Like, what's going on? How was he freed? And then you start seeing, okay, looking like things are going okay. And then by closer to the end of the episode, you see, oh, there's another group kind of doing their own investigation, so that totally makes sense. I was actually a little worried that they were just going to leave that untouched in this episode, that K just, he got lucky, maybe he knocked him out in his sleep, or there was a guard who had a soft spot for him. So I really did appreciate how it actually did tie into the plot at hand, and just how everything was connecting. The thing with Psychopaths 3 with this season is how it feels like we're watching a giant-ass movie. Like, they had all those Center of the System movies, they had the 2015 movie, but it feels like these are just like, it feels like a blockbuster in a lot of ways. But instead of waiting one to two years for the sequel you're getting it once a week and that's why I think this season is excelling so much for me is that it feels like there's so much being told even when they're focusing on supposedly one story at a time terrorist bombings or political capital and you know elections and things like that it all has been linking up to beat for us however it's been almost like this self-contained story and to see the amount of emotion and tension throughout this episode was completely exhilarating especially with the careful use of music to really set the tension on more than one occasion I love how it's just like this back and forth, like trying to get in contact with the governor, trying to figure out where the hell Kay is, 
trying to get the authority to go in and just shut down this religious cult. And it just felt like every step of the way, I was sweating as if someone was going to die. Like when it was his Kate and his wife and just the gun pointing, I was like, someone's dying here. And I didn't even take into consideration that maybe it's not just Kay who had combat training. Maybe his wife did as well, but as you can see near the end of the episode with the beat down towards Arata, like, you can't drag her into this. Like, both of these characters were trying to suppress their killing rage. That's the entire point of coming to this country, and they're being dragged back into it more and more, and it feels like by the time episode 8 concludes, I don't think Kay and Arata are still going to be partners. It almost feels like one's going to have to run away, and I mean, that would be heartbreaking, but it'd be a good narrative nonetheless. But the fact that Arata's father was supposedly either supporting this or he was you know a part of something similar like there is so much I want to learn with Arata and I feel like episode 8 isn't going to conclude his story I definitely feel like we're going to get a conclusion for this season this story with Bifrost however I think there's still going to be a lot more to explore that's why I think we're going to get a season 4 for sure I mean even after the conclusion of season 2 I thought it was pretty clear Psychopaths was still going to continue even if it makes missteps this series is insanely popular profitable I'd be shocked if they didn't keep making more in some capacity and then they made all those movies and I thought they were just going to continue on the movie format and even though season 3 kind of functions in a lot of ways like a movie I feel like we're definitely setting up for a bigger story in the future but it's nice to say and feel that season three is gonna wrap up with a bang and conclude the story that we got here so even if they didn't make more it still will probably feel damn satisfying in the end and I just thought it was exhilarating I felt like everything that I want to see in Psychopaths was kind of in this episode there was an insane organization people we were fearing not knowing what the hell is going on twists and turns you probably didn't see coming like <laughs> this dude apparently his hue's been clouded not because he's a bad person but because he was born of incest this is the first time in a very long time i've seen an anime bring up incest and have it be portrayed as negative and not some weird sibling romantic fantasy fetish bait it's like wow psychopaths you're really doing something different here i gotta give you credit but just to see like the amount of carnage that we experience here it almost feels like in a strange way bfrost is in the worst situation but also in the best situation because there's less people trying to compete for either power or authority or something or some form of end goal but at the same time because they have less people is it gonna mean that in one episode they can completely shut them down most likely or they're gonna set up for another story with another season in the future. It just felt like this episode was trying to prove that everything that we've been building up to over the past three weeks wasn't for nothing, and that everything, every single story that we've seen was actually connecting to the final end goal, and I don't know, I feel like for a long time now, it was clear like Akane wanted to expose, wanted to fix the system, right? Wanted to make sure that all the corruption that she's experienced wouldn't continue to happen, and clearly Arta and Kay would be the keys to solving it, but it definitely feels more like Arta is going to be the key, especially since his crime coefficient went to zero when he was using his ability, and the fact that now that Kay and Arta have a wedge, it'll be interesting to see if these two will be able to fix or expose or reveal whatever they have to by the end of the season, and what will happen to their relationship by the time those credits roll for episode 8, and I don't know where exactly they want to go, I have a few ideas obviously like I mentioned, but at the same time, they don't have to follow those, and it would probably still work out pretty exceptionally well. I just felt like every time we started getting more ideas of what was behind this terrorist organization, how they were trying to kill criminals and, you know, free the discrimination from this world and really kind of put it back into place. And it kind of felt like you understood their motives, but clearly this wasn't the optimal outcome. There's other ways to fix the system. But I guess if your back's been pushed against a wall and you've seen nothing but discrimination and hate for so long, it's kind of obvious why sometimes this does become justified in their minds. It's never actually justified. But if you've been trying to fight back against it for so long, you understand how a mind can shatter to the point that these bombings become their answer. It's clearly not the answer, but you at least understand their mentality and their motives, unlike a lot of stories where they just say they were crazy and leave it at that. No, Psychopaths 3 went in the direction of explaining their psyche and making us just feel empathy for all of them, knowing it's not the solution, but at the same time... You were in support of Arata, or at least I know I was, in hugging the man and trying to calm him down, not let the Dominators decide for you, but realizing that we don't have to always use violence in what the system says. We can make our own decisions. So it's just like, this is Psychopaths without the flaws of Season 2. It's, it's without the flaws of any of the projects that it's had. It feels like such a contained story, such an isolated story, 
but it feels so goddamn rewarding that every single week I'm usually less speechless or incredibly impressed in some capacity. And like I said at the beginning, I think this was the best episode of Psychopaths 3 to date because it felt like, in a lot of ways, it was the conclusion of a season. And now, with the next episode, it was almost like that bonus OVA that we're getting. And it just feels like they can wrap up this season, go out with a bang, while still setting up more psychopaths in the future. Unless they did like an hour and a half episode next week, I definitely think we're setting up for a more of a season four or maybe another movie. But at the same time, I do think we're going to get a pretty satisfying conclusion with at least our 10k story. Especially now that Bifrost is pretty much destroyed. They still have a couple of people left. I still feel like they can wrap up this story in an elegant manner. I definitely think it's a shame it's not more popular in terms of like the West. In terms of people discussing it, reviewing it, and just kind of hyping it up. It's still a massively popular series. But it is disappointing that I guess maybe because there are so many movies that a lot of people just think catch up for season 3. But I think this series and this season in general general is going to explode in the long term especially if they do confirm like a season four I think a lot of people are, who may have slept on season three are gonna check it out and be like okay I guess maybe I should try it maybe it was better than season two and their jaws are probably gonna be on the goddamn floor I can definitely bet I just thought it was so good the production from the visuals to the music to the voice acting to just the overall emotion and just how much I was sweating throughout this episode it felt like psychopaths at its absolute best and without a doubt, it was my favorite episode of the season, maybe even the series in a lot of ways. That's how much I liked it. I know that's saying a lot, but I really enjoyed this episode. What can I say? But what did everyone think of this? How did you find the connecting of all the pieces and where it's leading up with its final episode? Whatever you're feeling, do let me know down in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy, be sure to drop a like. And remember to hit that subscribe button if you have any news. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.